On today's episode of Bengals Breakdown, we're breaking down my perfect and ideal off-season plan for the Bengals in 2024 with the obvious goal in mind, finding a way to win a Super Bowl. It's a 10-step plan with some other steps involved in there as part of it, obviously. But before we get to my plan, what is your confidence level in the Bengals this offseason? Scale it for me from 1 to 10, 1 on the low end, 10 on the high end. Coaching to begin. Step number one is to keep either Brian Callahan or if he leaves, as the, and uh, keep Dan Pitcher then as your offensive coordinator. I actually like both those guys. Offense obviously is not perfect. There's a reason why so many teams are interviewing Callahan. If he does go, I would simply promote your quarterback's coach into the OC role. Plan or step number two of the plan. Keep T. Higgins and say goodbye to, to Tyler Boyd, which I do think is the path this team is likely trending on as we sit here already. You know, Joe Burrow says he wants and expects T. Higgins to return to the Bengals. Uh, when your quarterback does that, when you've given him the literal franchise to a certain extent, you've paid him a completely different contract than you've ever done in your team's history. And he says, yeah, as part of this contract, we made uh, you know plans to keep room for guys like T. Higgins. You know, I, I think that's a good plan to do. Now, I, I did keep it vague in step two. I said keep. I didn't say pay. I didn't say tag. You can go either of those routes, I suppose. But I do think running it back with the higgins burrow chase trio for at least one more year actually makes a lot of sense. I know Higgins' numbers were down this season, and that was very d disappointing, uh, by the way, to, to not get to where you wanted to go. Those three guys played like, I think it was like 170 snaps of offense together. It's an insanely small sample size. When they were together and everyone was healthy, uh, they, were the, they were the number one offense in those snaps. It's a very small sample size, but we, we know how dynamic and good that group can be. So you keep Chase, you keep Higgins, you say goodbye to Boyd, you let Yoshivas and Jones and another addition, whether it be a, a cheaper veteran or a draft pick at some point in the third or round or day three, whatever, let them fill that, that wide receiver three spot and let your two studs dominate. So do you agree with me? Would you keep T. Higgins if you ran the Bengals this offseason? It's the pinned comment on today's video. So if the ad happens to come here on YouTube, that's fine. Take advantage of it. Head down there and go vote. Y for yes, N for no. Number three, we'll go to the trenches. Williams walks and DJ Reader stays. Now, the, the, the money is a factor for Cincinnati with the way they tend to operate. I thought Jonah Williams was fine. Uh, as the, the, the right tackle this past year for Cincinnati. Uh, the O-line had some issues, which we will get into. I promise you it's a big part of the plan. Jonah Williams is a starting caliber offensive tackle. He is going to get paid. And I don't, I don't want to break the bank for him. Now, DJ Reader, meanwhile, that was a good pickup by Cincinnati. Like They, they, they really valued him. Now, he's coming off the, the awful injury, the, the quad injury, I have, and he doesn't know either. He is, we have no idea what this market is going to end up looking like for DJ Reader. Maybe it's a one-year incentive-based deal, whatever it is. I'm down to bring him back because if I don't have Reader, I got nobody in the middle who's a good enough run stopper. So step one is to, is to keep Reader and still do more defensive tackle, which we will get into. Step number four is, is actually to cut Joe Mixon. Uh, I don't know if they're going to do that, by the way. you got to make a decision. He's got a roster bonus due uh, early on in, in March. But I'm cutting him. I'm saving that $5.7 million. I'm giving it to somebody else on defense or offensive line. I'm keeping Chase Brown. And I'm, I'm signing a cheaper veteran back. There's going to be a lot of backs available this offseason. The market is not very favorable right now. You can give that five to a better younger back I think even if it's just on a cheaper one-year deal or I can simply draft somebody on day two and I, I like Mixon but I'm getting average results here across the board it's four years in a row now I'm getting about four yards per carry and that's not all Mixon's you know, fault or blame it is the reality of life as running back you are so dependent on the supporting cast that I don't want to pay you big money if they keep mixing, I'm not going to be in shambles. It's not going to ruin your season, whatever. But you do still need to figure out how to get some more explosive plays out of your backfield. It's not really Mixon's game at this stage. I think you can find explosive, explosive plays elsewhere. 
So what would you do with Joe Mixon? Open uh, comment section to go vote. K for keep, C for cut. Step five is sign a tenant. I would love to say trade for, for Brock Bowers. I just don't think they're going to do it. That's not how this team is wired. But I do think you should be looking for more than just the also-rans at tight end that nobody wanted. You threw the ball a lot to tight ends this year with a bunch of dudes that should not be started. And Keith Tanner Hudson, that's fine. I need a little bit more stability at the tight end spot. Unfortunately, it's not a great group. Uh, it's guys like Dalton Schultz, who I think is just going to get paid by Houston. It's Noah Fant. It's Hunter Henry actually intrigues me a lot, by the way. Mike Kosicki, it's Gerald Everett. I think I'd lean towards Hunter Henry myself. I, I, you don't, I'm not saying break the bank, but like five, six, seven million bucks, that's totally reasonable. Let's, you, you can get a tight end for less than what Hayden Hurst got from Carolina that you were not prepared to pay. I, I do think that as a path is something this organization, frankly, really needs to find a way to, to consider and, and think about going down moving forward. Because otherwise, I, I just don't think it's, it's going to be good enough on offense. You need something more dynamic at the tight end spot. Number six, now we're going to the juicy stuff, right? Make a splash at defensive tackle. Now, I, I never thought this team was going to be a team that, that was going to make splashes uh, in terms of free agency. I never in my life thought they were going to be like, you know what? We're going to be the team that goes out and finds a way to throw money at Orlando Brown. They did. I think everything's kind of on the table there. Some free agent defensive tackles I think you can consider. Now, the first three names of this list are going to be hella expensive and probably out of your price range. Chris Jones, Christian Wilkins, Justin Matabike, probably all going to be expensive, right? But guys like Leonard Williams, guys like a nose tackle in Grover Stewart, guys like a really underrated player in Danico Autry who can still play as he ages, I'd love to get one of those guys. Now, maybe the Wilkins, Matabike markets aren't as great and you find that value and you go for it anyway. Like you do with, with Orlando Brown, awesome. But this defensive tackle room has to be better. And if that means you cut B.J. Hill to upgrade at, 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 some, at, at some other spot, so be it. That's, that's fine with me. But you need some more impact there because guys like Zachary Carter, et cetera, they ain't going get, to get it done. So when it comes to free agency, name a player who you want to go out and sign. Drop that player or players if you're an overachiever down in the comments. Also in the comments will be the link to this t-shirt. It's chatsports.com slash Bengals Jam. It's the Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase t-shirt. It'll always be, I think, pretty damn relevant for Bengals fans. If you remember NFL Jam, I know producer Chris does it. It's an awesome t-shirt. Links in the comments and the description of today's show. Chatsports.com slash Bengals Jam. Number seven, I think you need to add a, a good safety here. You know, Lou Anarumo does not play a lot of three safety sets historically. Um, and Daxton Hill showed some really good things at times. And some things that's like, dude, what are you doing out there? And, you know, you're not really going to do much at corner. You, you could always set yourself up if you spend big money to maybe you try Dax Hill, kind of like a, a nickel or even an outside corner guy, depending on what you do with Mike Hilton long term. The, the numbers look pretty good for Daxton Hill, actually. 110 tackles, six TFLs, a sack and a half, two INTs, 11 PBUs, but he wasn't always consistent. And there were some just, he's played over 1,000 snaps in his defense, and you're still just having basic blown assignments. Man, that, that's tough for me. So I am not afraid of, because let's be honest, guys, you miss Jesse Bates. And if you need an elite safety to make this defense work, then you got to go find one and figure out the hill battle thing later. So some free agents that are going to be available. Uh, I, I, I adore Antoine Winfield, but he's going to cost as much, if not more, than Jesse Bates. That kind of defeats your whole purpose, right? Cam Curl can kind of do some fun, sometimes box stuff. Geno Stone had a nice season. I love Kyle Duggar as a, a kind, of, kind of a hybrid box player. If you want to do some three safety stuff and play less Jermaine Pratt and or Logan Wilson on passing downs, which maybe is a path for you, that's, that's a name to consider. Uh, Xavier McKinney, if you want to go all Bama secondary, that's fun. Or... Maybe you look for some trade guys or cut candidates. You know, maybe Justin Simmons gets moved on from in, in Denver. Maybe Buda Baker becomes available. Maybe older players like Eddie Jackson, Quandre Diggs, Kevin Byard can come into this building and at minimum give you some better veteran experience 
that you didn't have this year because you Nick Scott was not it. He has to go. He cannot be back as a key piece for you. He was a real issue. Jordan Battle and Dax Hill are young. Your quarterback room is about to be, you know, veteran Mike Hilton, and then young guys came to their Brit DJ Turner. Maybe you want a true veteran in that second year to help make things a little bit easier for your young players. Now, we will have all the videos you can want. Free agency, draft, we already did cut candidates for you as well. News, rumors, do not miss out. Make sure you are subscribed for more free Bengals videos. Number eight, we're into the draft stage now. I'm going to attack the hell out of the offensive line in the draft. You have, keep Joe healthy. Spoiler alert. Uh, some offensive tackle options I think you can consider here. Uh, at that pick 18, right? J.C. Latham, uh, Taliesse Fuaga, Amarius Mims, Tyler Guyton all mostly played right tackle. So just throw them in there. I, I, I don't know if, you know, maybe there's a scenario uh, in which you don't get lucky and J.C. Latham isn't on the board for you. That's okay. Things happen. There's disappointment, et cetera. Uh, but Fuaga, I think, will be there. Mims has high upside. Guyton has high upside. My plan would be to let Jonah Williams walk, Find a cheap break the glass in case of emergency right tackle option, and then I'm taking one in the first round. But there's no way that all five of these guys go in the first 18 picks. There might even be one guy in the first 18 picks. Probably is, but maybe it's only two. Go for it. You can also look at the interior offensive line. Do you not want to roll back with Cordell Volson? You know, Troy Fontenot, Graham Barton could play le left guard for you. Maybe Cooper BB falls to you in the second round and you just take two offensive linemen. What I would do. And this is an organizational philosophy across the NFL, not specific to Cincinnati, is I would spend every year a top 100 pick on an offensive lineman and a day three pick on an offensive lineman. And, you know, there will be years where maybe the, the value is just not right and you don't do it. Maybe there are years where you double dip in the top 100. I'm fine with that. But I, I think with the sheer lack of offensive line play, if there's linemen you like, that should almost be, be your tiebreaker, especially since you have your quarterback in place at this stage. So name a player who you want to draft. Any player, any round, sound off for me in the comments section. I'd also add some more defensive line help because uh, I just think you need, the trenches are critical for this team. You've got to find some way to, to, to get some boost there. So some players that I would consider on day two, all defensive tackles, some more nose tackles, some more three techniques. You know, Chris Jenkins has upside. Rook Ororo has impactability. I think McKinley Jackson could be a great future nose guard for you, like in a very impressive fashion. You know, Mason Smith has upside. Ohio State's Michael Hall has shown flashes. I'd, I'd take one of these defensive linemen if I could. So I'm targeting trenches early and often in my draft, and then I'm filling it out with you know, you can add, add another you know, linebacker. You probably got to take one at some point on day three. You can add a receiver, add a running back. But I think trenches is key for the Bengals this offseason. Finally, keep Joe Burrow healthy. <laughs> How about we get an actual training camp for Joe? He hasn't really had one in Cincinnati. It was the COVID year. It was the, it was the uh, appendix, uh, the appendicitis. It was the calf injury. It's been, it was the ACL recovery. It's been everything. Imagine, you always start slow. Shit. Maybe, maybe if you had a good training camp, you wouldn't start as slow. And you need Joe Burrow to win a Super Bowl. So keeping him healthy, it's the last step. It's the most important one. So one more time through my perfect offseason plan. Keep Brian Callahan if you can. Otherwise, make Dan Pitcher your OC. Keep T. Higgins. Say goodbye to Tyler Boyd. Let John Williams walk. Keep DJ Reader in the fold. Cut Joe Mixon. Backfill him with cheaper, uh, uh, cheaper free agent and or draft pick. Sign a tight end who can start for you and isn't the Irv Smith, you know, cast-off talent. Make a splash defensive tackle in free agency. If you can, try to add a good safety because I think you really missed that with Jesse Bates this year. Then attack the hell out of trenches in the offensive line and defensive line in the draft and simply keep Joe healthy. So what do you think of it? If you don't like it, you can tell me. It's totally fine. Grade my off-season plan. And you can make all that work with your salary cap, especially if you're just a little bit more aggressive, by the way. A, B, C, D, or F in the comments.